What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, Transformers have gone and done a little bit of a rules update. Now, I know their rules updates usually come out on a Friday, but Friday we got news of Devastator. Not just Devastator as a card, but Devastator as its own standalone deck. Frankly, Friday was a very busy day, so they delayed it a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got the rules updates now. So as always, let's have a gander through them, shall we? And we start off today talking about my boy Grimlock. One of my very favourite Transformers, one of my favourite cards in the game. And it all centres around whether the extra damage counts as attack damage. You see, Grimlock's got a phenomenal skill in bot mode, whereby if you do more damage than you need to KO a character, your opponent gets to choose a character to take the extra damage. And the question is whether it's attack damage or not, and that is extremely relevant. So let's take something like Insecticon Scrapnel. Now Insecticon Scrapnel has another ridiculous ability, again in bot mode, whereby it can only take a maximum free damage from a single attack. So the question here is, are you attacking Scrapnel, or is damage being redirected to Scrapnel? So let's say you're attacking Scrapnel, and you need to do two damage to KO Scrapnel, but you actually do ten. Well now, You've done 8 damage more than you need, but you don't get to transfer damage. The reason is, Scrapnel cannot take more than 3 damage from an attack. Which means you're not actually doing 10 damage to Scrapnel, 2 KOs it, 8 gets transferred. You're doing 3 damage to Scrapnel, 2 KO it, and 1 gets transferred over. So when you're attacking Scrapnel, only free damage is done. And if you are redirecting the extra damage, it is free minus however much you did to KO Scrapnel. But if, however, let's say you're up against Insecticon Ransack. I know it's just called Ransack, but he's an Insecticon, gosh darn it. And you do 10 damage. But you only need to do 2 to get the KO on Ransack. Well, now... 8 damage is carried over. You need to do 2, you're doing 10, 8 gets redirected. Let's say for ease of example, that Scrapnel is the only other character on your opponent's side of the field. 8 extra damage gets transferred. But remember what I said at the beginning here. Grimlock's extra damage is not attack damage. That means that the full 8 would go over to Scrapnel here. If you're attacking Scrapnel, free damage is done, and if that's too much to kill Scrapnel, then the rest gets transferred over, but only from the free initial damage. But if you do too much and the rest gets transferred to Scrapnel, you can do essentially infinite damage because Scrapnel only prevents attack damage and Grimlock's extra damage, not attack damage. Incidentally, this means that Motormaster would prevent this damage going onto any of your other characters other than Motormaster, because Motormaster prevents non-attack damage done to your other characters, and given that this is the extra, I mean, non-attack damage, it would be prevented by Motormaster. We've also had a question about the interaction between Brave and Stealth. You see, Brave is the new keyword skill in Wave 2, Predacon Headstrong has this particular skill, and Brave says that if your opponent is able to, they must attack that character. Remember, if there's only one untapped character, your opponent has no choice, they have to attack it. Similarly, if there are untapped characters, you have to attack tapped rather than untapped, so it doesn't work perfectly, but generally speaking, if you can, you have to attack a character with Brave. However, stealth is the opposite keyword here, which says that you cannot attack it if you have a choice. So again, if there's only one tapped character and it happens to have stealth, you would still attack them. But that would essentially be the only situation under which you would. Okay, makes perfect sense. What if you've got both? 
So we've got the upgrade card Stealthiness, which grants the character Stealth. What happens if you've got Predacon Headstrong with Brave? And you attach the utility Stealthiness so that it has both Stealth and Brave. And they cancel each other out. Which I suppose makes perfect sense. I mean, if you were to give somebody plus one attack and then minus one attack, they would have the same amount of attack. Here, if you've got Brave and Stealth, they cancel each other out. Neither of them actually works. So I suppose the message here, the lesson here, don't put stealthiness on Headstrong. Unless you want to get rid of Brave, in which case, put stealthiness on Headstrong. There is a question about checking for KOs. This came around because of electrified spikes. Do you check for the KO as soon as you calculate damage, or is it at the end of the attack phase? What about a simultaneous KO because of reckless charge or electrified spikes? And essentially, we're always checking for a KO. One thing they did clarify here, let's say you've got Ransack, for instance, which gains an extra attack for each damage counter on. If Ransack attacked into electrified spikes, you would take the damage from electrified spikes. You would then have plus one attack when you actually went about doing the attacking. So for Ransack, attacking into Electrified Spikes, actually an advantage. Now, we also had a couple of questions about Decepticon Psy Ops. Now, this is one of the more interesting cards in Wave 2. Was revealed by the lovely folks over at Vector Sigma. And this has a lovely skill whereby you can KO any character you like as long as you discard a number of cards from your hand equal to the star cost of that character. Well, the question is, and there are a couple of these, does it trigger before or after battle cards are flipped for the attack? And the answer is before cards are flipped. So essentially, if you choose to use the skill and get the KO, the defending character is KO'd and there is no battle so therefore, nobody flips cards. The person attacking doesn't flip cards. The person defending doesn't flip cards. Before you actually get the battle going, then the character is KO'd and there is no battle. The question is, if you use your ability to KO an opponent's character card, does the battle end or do you then get to select a new target for an attack because the original target is no longer there. I.e., I've already just told you that there is no battle when you use a skill to KO a character. Does that mean you get to battle a new character? And the answer is no. The battle has ended, and I love that they put this in the answer. Bombshell is still swinging at the air where the defender used to be standing. There is no battle, but you do not get to substitute in a new battle instead. We've had a question about combiners. If a combiner is KO'd, do you have the combiner in the KO area? Or do you have each of the individual Transformers that made up the combiner in the KO area? And the answer is, it is a combiner, it is KO'd as a combiner, and it sits in the KO area as a combiner. Now, generally speaking, this is irrelevant, because when you KO a combiner, it's the end of the game. Because we've yet to see anything where you can play other characters along with it. But this is relevant for Volcanicus. You see, Volcanicus comes around from the new Grimlock. And the new Grimlock lets you put Dinobots from outside the game into your KO area. Now, if you're playing a real game and your opponent's trying to stop you, it's just never going to work. But theoretically... You can actually get two sets of Dinobots in the KO area. You can get two Volcanicus out, which means we do need to know what happens when they get KO'd. Now, in the rulings that they made today, they did mention Volcanicus and they also mentioned Redacted. We know we've got one combiner left to come in Wave 2 and there may well be ones in Wave 3, 4, etc. But... There is definitely one planned which would also, well, be able to exist with other Transformers because otherwise it wouldn't be relevant. Watch this space, ladies and gentlemen. And the final ruling we need to mention today, it's all to do with Shockwave and the fact that, well, it's got the skill in bot mode. When your opponent scraps a card from their hand, they choose a character 
and they do one damage to it. Now, let's say for argument's sake, your opponent has got two characters, each of which has two health remaining, and they've got four cards in hand. You play System Reboot, forcing them to discard all four cards in their hand. Do you take four damage counters at once, meaning they all go on to one character and only one is KO'd, or do each of these damage counters go on individually, in which case two would go on one, two would go on the other, and you'd win the game? If characters are going to get KO'd with shockwave damage, this is incredibly important. And the ruling is that every card discarded with shockwave skill is a new instance of one damage counter. This is huge because it means as soon as a character is KO'd, the player who's playing against Shockwave now has to nominate a new character to take the damage. This makes a gigantic difference. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the rules you need to know for this week. Tell me what you think about them in the comment section. And I will, of course, be back when there is a new set of rulings next week. For now, ladies and gentlemen, go nuts in the comment section. But do please remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Keyforge and Transformers and whatever else takes me fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.